Hello, welcome back to Wit Tips. Today we're going to be looking at a strategy to help us try to break down an image uh, that might be used in a descriptive writing task. So on screen now you've got a typical English language uh, creative writing task that you might see uh, in examinations or assessments in lessons or for homework or just for practicing uh, with. At the top there, there are some guidance, some bullet points if you will, uh, about what we should be doing and what we need to check for. And the third one down there is what we're really going to focus on in this short video today, which is uh, that you are reminded of the need to plan your answer. Good pieces of writing uh, in examinations have good plans. They know what they're trying to achieve. That's probably the most important part before you set out writing. What is it that you're trying to achieve? And I will try and help you with that today uh, with a little strategy to break down um, the picture. Uh, that you can see. So it says here your school or college is asking students to contribute some creative writing for its website. Either describe a mountainous area as suggested by this picture or write a story with the title The Climb. We're going to have a, a focus today on the first one of these choices which is describe a mountainous area uh, and we're going to use the picture to try and uh, structure um, a piece of writing within this little task or this little examination. So despite having a choice of uh, briefs that you might follow, tasks that you might follow, uh, despite having a picture as well, the bit more that you see on screen is an all too familiar sight for students in writing assessments. Writing is one of the most difficult tasks I think we have to do uh, within GCSE education um, because it's bringing together an awful lot of different skills and often at the end uh, of quite a long exam, sometimes students have spent over an hour on a reading section at this point and are already feeling mentally fatigued, mentally tired um, and it's a difficult thing, you're faced with a blank space and a blank page and that can be uh, quite intimidating uh, as you try and get down your thoughts against some very tough time constraints. Today though we're going to be looking at how we use the picture uh, as a springboard or something that will take away this kind of uh, this anxiety, if you will, of the blank page and struggling for ideas. Because hopefully, this strategy is something that you can transfer to any task that you get where there is a picture involved. So I've chosen this picture uh, on purpose because it's quite a big picture. Now, sometimes if you get a picture like this. Um, you could feel a little bit daunted, a little bit anxious about trying to cover everything or trying to avoid the obvious. Um, and you mustn't forget that the picture is there. It's a springboard. It's a stimulus. It's there to, to set you off on your ideas and your original threads and your original writing that you're going to uh, create. Okay, So this one, um, even a big picture like this, or especially if you get a big picture like this, uh, we're going to need to try and break it down. So the very first thing that we need to do uh, with this picture is to draw on a rather large Z, which will then uh, make your image look a little bit uh, like what you can see in front of you. Now you could do this with a highlighter, you could do it with a pen, you can do it imaginary in your mind. It doesn't make any difference whatsoever uh, to the plan that we're going to make in a second. And it's something that you can do quite quickly having looked at your picture to help you break it down. Once you've done that then, uh, you might want to look um, at the different lines that you've created on this set um, and my advice would be then to try and pick out an object on each of your three lines sometimes more than one object depending on what uh, the lines are covering so if we have a look at this I've circled the top there at uh, the top of the Z and I'm thinking about the sky as I come down I'm looking at the hills and the background uh, as I come down further on the on the Z line the, the diagonal line I'm looking at the clouds uh, and then at the bottom I'm looking at the ground and the grass uh, in which uh, the person is stood upon. Okay, uh, So it's given me points that I could describe so I can then start to plan my description. I think, right, I am going to start off with the sky and it gives me some kind of focal point. And I'm going to kind of follow this down, if you will, from the top to the bottom of the picture, picking out these objects that I think are interesting uh, and that might need some uh, description or might be interesting things to choose to describe in my piece of writing. So once you've done that, uh, the next part of this step, as it's called the hourglass, is to turn this Z into an hourglass 
style shape and um, so we take our bottom of our Z and join it right back up to the top to make the hourglass figure and obviously as we've done that we're going to then pick out some more objects on the line returning to the top and it's this bit which makes it um, makes your writing uh, a little bit more structured and a little bit more effective okay and we'll look at why uh, now when we talk about the objects that we're going to select so as you can see from my example here what I've selected and coming back up on the yellow line is now to finally focus in on the character you can see and your circles don't have to be the same size depending on what you want to cover and your circles can actually indicate to you how much time you want to spend on each particular object and then it gives you a way of seeing your paragraph sizes as well in your head that's a small circle because I don't want to spend too long on that so that's going to be a smaller paragraph this is a bigger circle because what's in there is of more note uh, in the picture and therefore I want to spend more time describing that as well but really as we come back up there the, the key with this hourglass figure uh, is to try and make sure that an object um, on the line joining back up uh, somewhere is an object that you've already talked about so for me if you look at the, the yellow circle at the end of the, the top line looking at the sky I'm returning back to it so I've started my description off with the sky and then to complete it in some kind of cyclical structure I'm going back to the sky as well and the reason why I've chosen uh, to put the yellow circle at the end of that top line I've said is as you can just see in there there's a slight crack in the in the clouds which I think is quite an important uh, place to finish on. I'm going to start with the darker clouds at one side and as I return back and I focus on the clouds at the end of my description which is going to be the opening and the end of my paragraph I'm going to change the tone ever so slightly and talk about the crack in the clouds um, so I'm coming back to an object but I'm changing the way in which I've talked about it or the reader or examiner has thought about the object before in my piece of writing and that's quite effective and quite powerful so although we're seven minutes into this video that would have been a 30 seconds to one minute task in the exam where I quickly look at my picture, I draw my Z on, uh, I select my objects, come, uh, I fix the hourglass figure up, I go back up, I pick out an object that I've already described and I return to it and try and change the way that my examiner or my reader feels about it. It wouldn't be my plan, uh, my plan after I've done that uh, would be uh, looking something like this so I've picked my objects out and I'll be thinking right the bits in red here are quite key for me because they help me to create a tone and that's an important thing within a description um, so I will be adding in uh, some thoughts that I've got in my head some initial thoughts and trying to create some images already before I actually start writing um, because they're quite an important thing. So you can see here that I've started with number one, describe the dark for board in sky. So I'm setting this kind of dark tone. And at the end, you can see there on point six that I'm returning to the sky, but now the focus is on the sun cutting through and it's on hope. Also, you can see in there, I'm building in some uh, nice vocabulary that I might want to use, things like isolated and some images there again of metaphors like a, the blanket of thick fog. So I start to build some vocabulary, start to build an atmosphere uh, in addition to building a structure within my plan here as I go through and say what I'm going to describe. Okay, So it doesn't just finish with the hourglass figure, still keep trying to build that tone uh, and get those ideas down as early as you can so your writing has got as much direction um, and as much clarity as it can have before you start to write it. It doesn't mean that it might not change organically as you're writing and you think of something really good that you want to include in there or you see something in the picture and you go back to look at something in the garden and see that first time round, I need to build that in. Plans are there, they don't have to be stuck to an examiner, doesn't expect you to stick to a plan and not change from it. Uh, they're there to help you and guide you and give you the best, like I said, possible platform to create the best possible piece of writing uh, that you can in your time conditions. Final tip then with this strategy is that you don't have to use the full image. As you can see on the picture uh, here where I've drawn my hourglass, I've reduced it down in size considerably. Um, so I'm just focusing on an area that I want to describe because that fits and focuses my description. So I've ignored the sky in this one and I'm focusing a lot more on the character within the picture. Uh, the strategy does work, as I say, covering the full image uh, and it does work breaking it down 
um, and I think it works for images uh, that are not just landscapes but also for other different styles of images that you might encounter in exams or in assessments uh, or as you're practicing your creative writing. So for example if you look at the two images that we've got here they're much closer up containing pretty much one dominant object in each one but the hourglass formation still allows you to break that object down and give you different elements to focus your uh, different paragraphs on. Okay, so there's another paragraph hack uh, in here as well. If you struggle to paragraph as you move on to your different objects within your object, uh, then you can change that paragraph uh, as well. And you're still building up to that return, whether it be the dog's eyes that you want to return to, uh, whether it be the eyes of the street performer that you can see here uh, that you want to return to, you still complete that nice cyclical, um, cyclical structure uh, with this hourglass formation. So it's quite a powerful way uh, of breaking down uh, any image that you may encounter uh, in any writing task. Finally then, don't forget to practice this as much as you can. Have a look at pictures uh, that you might have lying around your house in terms of magazines or old photographs. Have a look at your phone, scroll back through your uh, camera roll on your phones, look at pictures, think about hey would I break those pictures down are all good opportunities for you to be able to practice and refine uh, how you would handle a picture in an assessment or a GCSE task.